What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be going over three tips to organize your tackle bag to save you time and money when you're fishing. And then I'm also going to go in depth on what I carry as far as the lures, what's in each of the boxes, the specific lures, specific topwaters, what kind of hooks I use. All that information is going to be covered at the back half of this video so make sure you stay to watch that. Um, if you're new here guys, my name is Kay. This is Tides Fishing. I do all kind of saltwater fishing tips and tricks. So if you're into that, make sure you hit the subscribe button right here somewhere. And then before you guys get on me, I know it's been a long time since I've made a video. I'm like, Kay, you haven't made a video in forever. Where you been? I actually went fishing last week and the audio on the camera stopped working. So I couldn't make that into a video, but I did post all the pictures from that on Instagram. So if you guys haven't followed us on Instagram, go follow us at Tides Fishing. I'm also gonna start running some polls and kind of stuff on there. So if you wanna be more involved with the channel, make sure you go follow that page on Instagram. But guys, I think we're at like 400 followers, or 420 subscribers or something at the time um, making this video. I just wanna say thank you to every single one of you guys. Really means a lot to me, all you, the first subscribers when the channel gets going. It really gives me motivation to keep making these videos. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the three tips and tricks for organizing your tackle box to save you time and money. So for the three tips and tricks that I'm going to give you guys for organizing your tackle box, I'm going to do these real quick and then we go ahead and get into it. Number one is going to be always carry some type of medical supplies. For me, it's peroxide just because salt water, you do get cut, you do get hooked sometimes, and you need to be able to clean that wound out. So having something in your tackle box to not only clean the wound, but then also patch it up, band-aids, some type of gauze or something, is going to make it much more, I guess you would well, make it a much more enjoyable fishing trip versus if you don't have any of that stuff, you're gonna be bleeding everywhere. So make sure you have something to where if you do get a cut, you are able to patch it up, get back fishing. And then number two is going to be organize your stuff, especially with these types of boxes, into specific categories and kind of keep all of your main tackle into two boxes. That's the way that I do it. Just because me, so like when I go kayak fishing, all I gotta do is just take the two boxes that I mainly use out of this bag and stick those in my kayak and I'm ready to go. So for me, I organize them as kind of weights, hooks, and corks in one of the boxes. The other box is nothing but hard baits, so top waters, kind of suspending baits, rattle traps, that kind of thing. And in the other box, I have all my soft black, so, so downsized lure, saltwater, assassin, anything you kind of throw with the jig head, that's in my third box. And then I also just have a, a normal just gallon Ziploc bag of all my soft plastic lures that are still in their package. Tip number three I have is to actually carry a separate small box with you. I don't have mine with me because I actually went fishing the other day, so my lures are drying out. But in this box, what you're gonna do is when you take a lure fishing or you take your top waters and you cut them off and you switch them, Instead of putting that top water back into your main tackle box, put that top water into this little box, put that lure into this little box, put those hooks or whatever it is, cork into this box. And so that when you get home, instead of putting that lure that you just got all the salt water on into your normal box, which will eventually end up corroding everything in there, you have this little box of all your lures that you use that day. And you can simply open it up, wash those out, let them dry, and then put all those once they've dried back into your main tackle box. And this is gonna save you a lot of money from buying new hooks and new lures. Someone told me this tip one time, it's probably one of the better things I've done. So that's a really good tip that you guys can start using here going into 2020. But, so those are my three tips for organizing and saving you money for your when you do your tackle box. And then, so let's go ahead and get into the exact lures and stuff that I've been using. Okay, so I got you guys a little bit better view here so you can see what's going on and make it a little bit easier to see how I have this, that, this thing organized. But I'm gonna go around pocket to pocket first and I'm gonna go inside and show you what's in each of the boxes in particular. So starting off on the side pocket, like I said, I always have some type of medical supplies. And for me, I have peroxide here. This is just to clean any hooks or cut from, or any cuts from hooks that I might get, or anything like that. Make sure you can clean out your wounds. That's what this is for here. And then also, I'm a big live bait fisherman. So on the other side here, I also have a hush bubbles. This is a bubbler. Something I mainly use in the summertime, but I have that also sitting in this pocket here on the side. And then inside, farther inside the pocket, I just have two extra things for the bubbler on the bottom. And then I also have an extra battery for the bubbler. So that's the left pocket. We keep moving around the tackle box. We get into the middle pocket here. In the middle pocket, I have my fish grips that I always use. Love these fish grips. I did another video on these on wading gear. So if you haven't seen that, make sure you go and check that out. 
And then also I have my fishing buffs. So I use these, like I said, this is also in the gifts video that I did. So if you wanna learn more about these or kinda of see where I get these from, go check out that video. Um, and then in the bottom of this bag, I also have some tissues just to kinda of help, like I said, clean up any other cuts or something that someone might have. And then the last two things is a hook sharpener. This is something that's kind of small I have laying around in here. And then also this scale that I use every now and then. So then going into the very front pocket, uh, this is where I keep just packs of hooks. So if I don't have hooks placed into the boxes yet inside the tackle box, just because I don't want them to rust or something, or I have leaders like this, this is just a set of leaders that I have here, I will put them into this pocket. And then once I run out of hooks in my main bag, I will put these into those boxes. These are just size 4 aught must add croaker, wide gap croaker hooks that I use. This is what I use for mostly pretty much live bait or um, when I'm fishing with croaker or even live shrimp. My favorite type of hook to use for those. But that's all I have in the very front pocket. And then sliding around to the other side pocket. On here I just have this knife. This is an old knife. I think I got this thing at Walmart for like $2. You can tell I haven't taken very good care of it, but it's just something I use for cutting up live bait or if you have to cut off a hook real quick or a piece of line. And then this is my line pocket. So this is where I keep all of my fluorocarbon, my leaders, mono for leaders, and I actually have a little bit of braid in here just in case if I need some more braid on something. So this is the mono, I mean, sorry, this is the fluorocarbon leaders that I use. Um, I think this is this is 20 pound fluorocarbon, so that's what I normally use when I'm fishing with croaker, live shrimp, really anything. 20 pound fluorocarbon is my go-to for saltwater fishing. And then I actually have, in case I'm going for something heavy, or let's say we're catching some sharks or something and we're trying to not break off, this is 30 pound mono that I will tie on. Mono is really good because it has some stretch in it versus fluorocarbon does not have any stretch. So some people prefer mono leaders. I prefer fluorocarbon. It's just really what your preference is. And then also a little tackle tip is to bring these little rubber bands with you or wristbands and put them around your line. Keeps your line from going everywhere. Saves you a little bit of time. And then I also have a thing of braid in here. So this is just some extra power pro braid I have laying around in case I need to re-spool a line real quick. I mean re-spool a reel real quick or something to that nature. I have a little bit extra just sitting in my tackle box. And then finally, the last of the outside pockets we have is the back pocket. And so here I just have an extra pair of pliers that I use. They're a little bit rusted, but they're still there. Bought these, got a cork tied on them in case I drop them. They still float. And then I also have gulp swing mullet. This is one of my other favorite lures I like throwing, especially underneath the popping cork. If you're taking people with you and you don't have live shrimp, grab some of these puppies. They are, work very well in our popping cork or just on a jig head, especially if you're fishing for flounder. And you can buy these little things. It is very expensive to buy the little pack like this with the juice and everything still in it. But the thing is, once you get any type of gulp, all I do is no matter if it's gulp shrimp, I'll just throw them all into this little container here and it seals off really nice. Keeps everything from getting really messy and smelly. And then at the bottom of this, I just have an extendable ruler in case I ever catch a really big fish and I want to measure it. I keep that here on the bottom of this pocket. So opening the top of the tackle box, you can see this is not like most tackle boxes that you see hard plastic. Normally there's four boxes in here. As you can see, I only carry three of them in here. And that's just what I like to do because I like to have a little bit of extra space. So starting off like you guys see, I have carry a bubble blade knife with me. I did another video on this too. That's also in the gifts video. So check that out. Like I said, if you guys are interested in any of these kind of things you see in my tackle box, most of them are covered in that video. But I always like having a fillet knife on me just in case I'm fishing with someone else. I need help fillet some fish. Love having one of those on me. In the front of the tackle box, I have just my gallon bag of lures. So if you have lures and they're not out of the package yet or they're still sealed, I recommend just putting them in a gallon bag like this and making it very easy for you to go in and get some out of there if you need them and it keeps them from being all scattered all over your tackle box just real quick easy organization for those and then i don't normally carry these in the summertime but since it's winter time right now i have my custom corky box here so this here these are really cool these are very popular down here on the south coast they're suspending baits and this is actually the very nice ones here and they're really famous for catching some big trout. And I have not used many of these yet just because I have some older ones that I've been throwing. But I'm definitely going to throw these here in some upcoming videos. But these are the corky lures that I enjoy throwing. So I keep those also in my tackle box. And if I'm in my kayak, I'll go ahead and throw these in there too in my crate. 
the first box is my weights and corks box so this is where i keep all of my weights and corks that i'm going to be using as you guys can see here on the top i have all of my popping corks that i take fishing with me and i use when i go fishing and then here i have a little bit more corks then i go into this is just kind of my random hooks that i have here a little bit normal hooks here these are just your normal one aught size must add hooks this is just great for like catching a little croaker or something and then I go in down here. I have a little bit of organization that I'm doing. You can't see it, but written on the bottom of these, I have one sixteenth, one eighth, and one quarter. And then I have random. So this is how I keep my jig heads organized in my tackle box. I keep them sorted out by their weights. So it makes me real easy if it's a windier day or something, and I want to get a heavier jig head. I know exactly where to look. I don't have to go digging through a bunch of packages. And then same thing here, the croaker hooks that you guys saw. This is just the same four out croaker hook. That was, I showed you guys, I was in that package here. A little bit of weights, some croaker shakers here on the side when you're fishing with croaker. And then going down this box, I have a little, couple more croaker shakers. And then I also just have a bunch of kind of miscellaneous weights here. So this is the second box in my tackle bag. And that is the hard baits box. So this is where I keep all my top waters and spoons and rattle traps. And I also do keep my corkies in here. I, can, I don't know why I consider those a hard bait, but I do. So starting off in the top of my box here, I have the super, I'm sorry, sorry, I have the she dog. I have it in a pink chrome and I also have it in a silver and black color. I did a video on my favorite top waters and these are included in that video just because I really enjoy using these top waters. Then coming over, I have the Spone Skitter Walk and I also have a Super Spook Junior. This is my overall favorite top water that I like using is the Super Spook Junior. So I have those, um, a couple of these stored throughout here. And then like I said, this is the same combination I have in the top of this side over here is a Super Spook Junior and a Skitter Walk below that. Then I also have two full size Super Spooks here, one in bone color, one in kind of a traditional mullet color um, right here. Then I have two spoons, silver and a gold. I need to get new of these. These are kind of corroded a little bit. And then on the bottom side over here, this goes into all the corkies that I've been using lately. So as you can see, these are much older than the other three, but these are where I keep my corkies. I start throwing these during the winter time like this. And then here in the middle, I have some extra trouble hooks in case I want to throw on, in case something rusts or something. And then I also have these little uh, O-rings that I use on the front of my top waters. In case you don't want to tie a loop knot, I just tie those O-rings on. It gives them a lot better action. So that is my hard baits box, and let's go ahead and finish it up with the soft plastic box. So let's go ahead and get into these real quick. Quick tackle tip too, when you're organizing these boxes, for if you throw spec rigs of any type, what I do is I cut out a piece of cardboard. And as you can see here, I there's a spec rig underneath this, but if you guys know, if any of you guys store spec rigs, you know that they go all over the place. So I just put that piece of cardboard on top of the spec rigs and pin them down, and it keeps them their, their, uh, keeps their mono leaders from going everywhere all over your tackle box, which is very handy. And here in the top right, I have Bugs Lures. These are the lures I use for sight casting redfish. You can check them out on his website. These are some really unique types of lures, almost a fly, but they have a little bit heavier weight that allows you to um, throw these with like a traditional spinning reel. And then on this side, I kind of have my DOA shrimp. So I have the normal color, kind of the sandy color here. And then I also have the black with the chartreuse tail here on the bottom below that. And then down here, I kind of keep all of my chicken on the chain color. These are some chicken boy lures that I do enjoy throwing for redfish sometimes. And I also have like a normal saltwater assassin in the famous salt and pepper color that I've thrown a couple times recently right here. And then I have a little gap here that I do keep some of the ones in the bag. These, I'll go ahead and go into these real quick. Specific down south lures. This color is the strawberry wine. I've been throwing this recently. Good, great winter color right here. This is the plum chartreuse. Make sure I'm telling you guys right. Like I already went over before, the red shad. And then also the dirty tequila i'm not for sure they're making this color anymore i think they are but i really enjoy this color especially kind of the winter time fishing in the in the river thank you for watching everyone i hope that helped you maybe see kind of if there's something else you want to add in your tackle box or maybe if there's something that i'm missing let me know i always like some tackle especially if it's gonna help me catch any more fish um thanks for watching everyone though make sure you hit the subscribe button on the video drop a like check out some of the other videos here on the channel i have a lot of this stuff is mentioned in some of the other videos i have and we will see you guys in the next one